ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday. Hey, you made it through. You made it through the great Lenten season. I know. It's over and now you have uh, this uh, holy week in front of you. You're probably thinking, "Oh, man, I have to I have to fast." all the way till Easter. Well, guess what? Today is outside of the fasting season. Actually, Lent ended yesterday and today it's an off day. So if you feel like having something outside of the Lenten menu, if you're tired of that vegan food, today would be the day to do it because tonight when the sun sets begins Holy Week and this Holy Week season of course has its own fasting rules and preparation in 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 preparation for the great feast which is Holy Easter next Sunday Christ has risen we're going to say to one another but in preparation for that this Holy Week gives us special lessons and it's very interesting because in the Armenian church in the Armenian Orthodox faith We not only remember what Jesus went through during that week of passion, but we actually live it. We actually walk with Christ. This is very unique. Through the liturgies that we have in our Armenian church, you actually walk with Christ. He walks with us. We walk through him through his trials, his tribulation. We actually go up to the cross with him. And guess what? On Sunday morning, when is Easter Sunday? we will have the right to be able to say that that resurrection is also a resurrection for all of us because we have lived through this week let me tell you what i mean in this because this is called armenian christianity today and we start thinking about all the things that are going on in the world all the tragedies that we see all the political situations you know what i always think about this and uh, when april 24th is coming by um we get consumed by the politics of the world we get consumed and consumed to the extent that we start thinking and believing that everything is controlled politically and it may be physically right everything may be controlled politically but what does jesus do when somebody asks him should we pay taxes he takes a coin he says whose face is on this he says it's caesar's face he says give it to caesar it's not your thing render unto caesar what is his and render unto god what is god and this is a very important thing because april 24th is coming up i'm starting to think about these ideas and especially at all the events that i've been going to lately you have these political heroes you have these presidents these congressmen these senators you have mayors who get up and proclaim all kinds of goodness and everything like that Do you realize that they 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 have a lot of compassion that they're doing this kind of work but you got to realize that they are what politicians right and so sometimes we get out there and say will obama say the word genocide you know well obama won't say it neither did bush neither did clinton and neither did the other bush in other words go back far enough and you see that all of them play these kind of politics so why trust them Well, you trust them to do the things that they have been enacted to do. And what is that? To tell the truth? Well, you hope that they tell the truth, but you expect them to take care of the military, to take care of the things that you as an individual can't do and a government can do. The classic example, of course, you can't maintain a fire department, and so you pay your taxes so the fire department is there to come out there and take care of you. You can't you can't uh, pave the the street in front of you. You don't have enough money, but together you put in your taxes and we create these systems. And politicians govern government politicians were leading the government to deal with that now what does god do god is talking about something completely different he's talking about the life that's within you and that's the faith the hope and the love that he has placed inside of you and guess what you cannot compromise these you cannot because god has placed them inside of you and so if god has placed it inside of you what do you have to do well you can either accept it or you could reject it 
And once you reject it, it takes, it takes a lot of energy to get it back. Once you accept it, it takes a lot of energy to use it. But that is what is the challenge of life. That's what we're here for, is to take that beauty that God has given us and share it. And we see during Holy Week, as we walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, we see that we have an opportunity to really walk, in the, walk with our Lord and understand the complexities and the simplicity of giving, of sacrificing, of sharing ourselves with one another. What happens today, Palm Sunday, Jesus enters into Jerusalem and inside Jerusalem people say, Hosanna, let's praise God because he has saved us. And they, they shower him with all kinds of messages of hope and love and praise because Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. But what happens? He gets there and the first thing that he sees, he sees his temple, the holiest of holy places. And it's run by thieves. There's money changers and lenders inside the church. And he goes in there and he turns over the tables. He doesn't hold back and say, hey, let me tell you what's going on. Let me give you some message. He doesn't play the politics. If he did, he probably would have still stayed alive, right? Think about that a moment, what I said a few minutes ago, right? That's playing the politics. He didn't play the politics. He said, there is something here that is greater than the politics. This is my father's home. And he clears out that temple. He clears it from everything that doesn't belong there in a message to us that our lives are full of all kinds of nonsensical things, things that really don't matter and don't belong there. And when God comes into our lives, we need to allow him to turn the tables over. Jesus wants to enter the holiest of holiest shrines, which is our, our temples ourselves, our souls, our bodies. Let him enter in. And what's he do? He gives you a newness. He gives you that opportunity to start again. So Jesus enters into the temple on Palm Sunday, turns over the, the tables, and he cleans it out. An opportunity on Palm Sunday to let Christ come into your lives, clean out everything that doesn't belong there. On Holy Tuesday, we, we, we commemorate this, this very special parable of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one of the ten maidens. In the ten maidens, we find that in the Gospel of Matthew, a very important message about preparedness, always being prepared for God to come into our lives. If you remember last week, we talked about the, the message that Jesus gave us on Advent Sunday, the message that you need to always love God, love your neighbor, have compassion, have care for one another constantly. We remembered the slogan of the scouts, Misht Badrast, always ready. And on the Feast of the Ten Maidens, we remember that we need to be always ready for Christ. On Holy Thursday, we go into the church and we commemorate the Last Supper. It's the institution of the Last Supper, which became the, the building block upon which today's modern Badarak, that service that you go to every Sunday, the Holy Divine Liturgy, that has been established not by people, but by Jesus Christ himself. And very important to remember, the Armenian church when we say apostolic comes to us from the time of jesus the apostles who were there at the last supper and we get together thursday and we commemorate the last supper in the evening thursday evening we have the the commemoration of the the feet washing you say what people wash feet wait this is a church Aren't we supposed to be very clean? Yeah, you are. But actually in the first church, you've got to think they didn't even have shoes. They would wear sandals. They would be walking not on paved roads, but they would be walking in dirt. Those feet were dirty. And Jesus, in an ultimate sign of humility, came and he washed the feet of the disciples. And he said, if I, you call me Lord and teacher, Lord and master, 
If I'm washing your feet, how much more should you be doing for others? And so when we get to church and we see this beautiful service, it reminds us of our willingness to give to others, to humble ourselves, to realize if God has humbled himself in front of us, how much more we should be humbling ourselves and helping one another. St. Nerse Shnorhali in this beautiful hymn called Aisuranjar reflects that the same hands that created the universe, that took the, the earth and the dust and created humankind were now washing those dirty feet that were filled with the dust. And this beautiful juxtaposition of ideas throughout Aisuranjar really gives us the vocabulary to go into the next service that night on Holy Thursday, which is called Chavarum. Chavarum literally means darkness. And here we recount the passion of Christ. And we hear of, we, we understand what it means to be without the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. When that light is gone, we're in complete darkness. And so too, throughout the church, the lights are extinguished. The candle by candle they go out until we are left in that darkness and we see the sadness. On Friday, we commemorate the crucifixion and the burial of Jesus Christ. And in fact, in our churches, we set up tombs where we actually go down, leaving our cares and our excess baggage behind and going down and understanding the complexity of what is going on. Christ up the, on that cross. If you remember a few years ago, uh, there was that beautiful movie, The Passion of the Christ. And Mel Gibson had put together this beautiful movie in which at the crucifixion we get the view of God. And if you remember that small little teardrop, the tear of God, imagine that tear hitting the earth and the earthquakes and the shattering because the sadness of God. Can you imagine he gave love to this world and the world rejected that love? And we get upset sometimes when our love is rejected. Now amplify that on the, uh, in the quantity of which God is speaking. A love for the entire world, entire humanity, and it is rejected. So during that service, we get to look at that. We start understanding the pain. Never fully, but we start understanding what's going on. And then, of course, on Holy Saturday, we get together. And we remember at night that it was before the dawn broke that the women went to the grave of Christ. And there they entered into the, into the tomb, and the Lord wasn't there. That's the message that I'm going to give you next week. But what I'm going to share with you this week is go through this during this Holy Week in your Armenian church. I call this show Armenian Christianity Today. Today the world needs us to be giving, to be caring, to be those ambassadors of love. Despite all the hardships, the ambassadors of light. This week you have an opportunity to go through the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I look forward to being with you next week when we share that ultimate message that comes to us on Easter Sunday. Until next week, I wish God's blessings upon you, especially at this Holy Week, and remind you in everything that you do, give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.